Welcome to a new video on form and meaning. A fox and a crane were friends. One day, the fox invited the crane for dinner. The fox prepared some very tasty soup and served it in a plate like he usually takes it. The crane, with its long beak, was not able to eat it from the plate and had to go home hungry. The next time, it was the crane's turn to invite the fox for dinner. He also made some really tasty soup, but served it in a tall jar like he usually takes it. The jar was fine for the crane, but the fox simply couldn't reach the soup, so he couldn't eat from the jar and went home hungry. Moral of the story? Even though we serve a really tasty soup, unless it is served in a container that the recipient can take, they will not be able to consume it, appreciate it, and be satisfied. In communication, we have two different components, form and meaning. Meaning is the idea or concept that is intended to be communicated. It refers to the thought, idea or concept in one person's mind that needs to be sent across to the reader or listener. Meaning is similar to the tasty soup that was served. Form refers to the structure of a language, the way that the language is arranged, the choice of words used in their order, grammar, and other features of the language. Form is similar to the container in which the soup was served. Remember that it is important that the meaning is communicated as intended and different forms can be used for this. If the target language doesn't have the form that was used in the source language, then form can be sacrificed to preserve meaning. For example, in English, when we say he died, in French, it is translated il est mort. But when we back translate the French into English, then we get he is dead. So we can very clearly see that in different languages, the same idea is communicated using different forms, that is, words, sentence structures, etc. Meaning always takes precedence over form, but form also has meaning. The meaning of form is impacted by cultural perceptions. Let us look at another illustration. Anne from USA, Kapoor from India, and Chin from China are meeting for the first time. Anne wanted to shake hands. Kapoor went for namaste, while Chin took a bow. The difference in cultural form of greeting caught them off guard for a moment. In this example, we can see that culture also impacts the way in which the meaning of the form is perceived and understood. The same meaning can be conveyed through different forms, and the same form can also sometimes be used to convey different meanings. Forms vary in different cultures. We should use culturally appropriate forms, but preserve the meaning. In other words, form can change, but meaning must remain the same. In our story, the plate was normal and acceptable for Fox, but was not normal or acceptable or convenient for the crane, because they are from different species, in our case, different cultures. Coming back to the previous example, a colloquial phrase in English that means he died is, he kicked the bucket. If we translate the phrase literally in French without thinking about its implied meaning, then we get something like, il est dans un coup de pied dans le seau, which to the French audience can mean that a man is incredibly angry, which is completely different from its original meaning. Similarly, the phrase, il s'est éteint, can mean he died to a person familiar with the phrase in French, but its literal translation in English would be, he is off, which can mean two things to an English person, like he is off his rocker, which means he is crazy, or 
he is off to some place, which is again completely different from its intended meaning. In summary, we have seen that form and meaning are different elements in communication. Meaning always takes precedence over form. Cultural perception can assign meaning to form. Therefore, when translating text, our focus is on bringing over the meaning faithfully and using the form appropriate for the target language. We hope this video has been a blessing. Thank you.